In this video, I'm going to show you how to get limb occlusion pressures in the lower extremity. What we're going to need, we're going to need our BFR worksheet. We're going to need cuffs that are going to be appropriate for the size of the patient or the client. We're going to need the auditory Doppler ultrasound or Doppler. A little bit of gel, ultrasound gel. Stigmometer. And tape measure. So I'm going to pull Emily out here. She's going to come into a supine position. I'm going to lay her on her back. And the first thing I'm going to do is figure out which size cuff do I need. And I'm going to take a measurement. I'm going to go right below her greater trochanter. If you're not sure where the greater trochanter is, then what I'll do is I'll come off the hip, I'll feel for the bony prominence, I'll bring the knee up, and then I'll just bring the the internal and external rotation of the knee or the femur. And I'm feeling the greater trochanter right underneath my finger, so I'll know, I know I'm in the right place. So we're gonna lay this flat. And I'm about, about 27 inches. If I look on my worksheet and I go to basic setup and I look at the cuff sizing chart, I can see that 27 is going to be somewhere between cuff size 3 or cuff size 4. I'm going to go with cuff size 4 because it's instead of it, uh, I want to make sure that there's overlap and that it fits nicely. So I'll show you what that looks like. So on these cups, you can see that it's labeled cup size 4. I want to make sure that the stem is facing me, and that will make it easier for me to inflate. I'm going to put the cuff on as high as I can, and I make sure that there's a little bit of overlap there. If it was doing this, the cuff would be too small, and then I wouldn't be able to get full occlusion. So I need to make sure that it overlaps. I'm going to go through the D-loop, and then I'm going to make this as tight as I can prior to inflating, and I'm going to close it down, and I'm going to let her lay flat, and then I've just got this stem facing me to make it easier. I'm then going to apply my clip. If the valve and the stem do not come together, that means that you haven't depressed the little metal piece. So press it down until you hear the click, and then go in. Now I'm going to open up the valve, turning it counterclockwise until there's zero pressure on the gauge, and then I'll close it back up. I'm going to let her hold on to that for me. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find, find the tibialis posterior pulse. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it on this leg so you can see what I'm doing, but right behind this medial malleoli, posterior and a little superior, I should find that pulse. Sometimes I got to dig around a little bit. If I needed to, I'd have her take her socks and shoes off. Normally I can just find it right there. Once I find it with my fingers, then I'm going to take a mark and just put a little X on it. And that's just going to help me later on. Now I'm going to take some ultrasound gel and I'm going to put it right on that mark. I have my audio only ultrasound. With these units, all I need to do is press it on until the green light pops on. And then I double check to make sure that the audio is turned all the way up. If I have it all the way down, and I don't hear anything, and then I'm trying to check for the pulse, I'll think I can't find the pulse because you're not hearing anything, it's just the audio, audio is down. I've done that before, don't do that. So I, I turn that all the way up. Now I'm gonna find the pulse. So 
So you can hear it there. Okay, so now I'm going to do this on the other leg. I'm just going to use the emollient that I have, or the lotion that I have, the gel that I have. And you can hear it there. Now I'm going to inflate until I no longer hear that pulse. And there I no longer hear the pulse and it's at 140 millimeters of mercury. I'll turn off my ultrasound. And so that's what's telling me 140 millimeters of mercury on this limb, in this position, with this cuff, is causing limb occlusion, meaning that she's not getting any arterial flow into the leg, and she's not getting any venous return back to her heart. And that's how we find limb occlusion pressure in the lower extremity. When I want to reduce the pressure off of the cuff, I then deflate about 10 millimeters of mercury at a time, either using the sphygmometer like I am, or I can just press the stem and release air about 10 millimeters of mercury at a time.